Yo, what's up? We are now at Ionity Dahl as usual. And uh, which car am I driving today? Well, none of these cars. I'm driving that. <laughs> it's called Kia Exceed. Yeah, it's plug in hybrid. So it's like a. Well, I'm not sure. It crossover? Is that the right way to call it? Uh, it, it has this it has similar shape as uh, the Kia Seed, but on the back, yeah, it's it's fairly short. You see, I tried the uh, well for the 1,000 km challenge. I used the the Kia Seed st station wagon estate. This one seems smaller. It's actually quite compact, and oh yeah, it has backup camera. It even has mo oh. motorized lift gate, huh? How about that? Trunk space? Uh, not the best. Well, uh, yeah, because the hybrid uh, system, the hybrid battery is taking up some of the space. And then uh, we have here. Oh, no, no, you can't. You can't open it from here. You have to open it from inside. I think it has something to do with safety that otherwise anyone could just open here and steal the, the precious dinosaur juice. Backspace is like, okay, not that great. Well, let me check something. Do we have USB ports here? Nine? Okay, niche USB port. Hover. Okay, front. You guys know Kia. Nice interior. <sighs> this is actually a big ass screen. It's a big ass instrument cluster. Let me show you. You might not see it, but now you're sure that this is a big ass screen. Okay, let me. Uh, let me tone down the... Okay, okay, let's do it. Look at that, look at that, huh? Okay, ooh, ooh, we are 100%. Yeah, okay, so it looks most uh, like most Kias. Wait, are we done now? I think we're done. Okay, okay. So the plan is that I will drive north, do a range test in pure electric mode, and then I want to measure... What? Why does it look so weird? Okay, there, there. And then I will also do some consumption test at 90 and 120 kilometers per hour when the battery is depleted. And then I have to show you that it is cold outside. So it's uh, one or two degrees Celsius outside. And you see, I think it's been snowing. So the snow hasn't melted yet. And I want to experience how it is to drive the car in pure electric mode because you know how these plug-in hybrids work? Okay, let me explain here. EVs, they have either a heat pump or a PTC heater. Most cars, they have heat pumps, actually. Uh, whereas fossil cars, well, they also have a heat pump, but they are not been designed to pump the heat like EVs. So they solely rely on getting the heat from the gasoline engine, the fossil engine. And if you are driving in pure mode, then I don't think we get heater. Well, we'll find out. All right, we are on the move now, cruising at 93 kilometers per hour. But you know, ideally you want this fuel number to be zero, but it's almost zero because I noticed that uh, once I started driving, um, it was running the, the, well, they call it the fuel engine, but fossil engines once running. And it's because HVAC was on. So, you know, let me show you here. If I fire on the, or if I just turn on auto here, look what happens. <laughs> Engine starts because it needs heat from the, the fossil. So you want to switch it off there. And now we are in pure mode. Yeah. <laughs> just as I thought. Whoa, 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 what? Okay, uh, all right. Uh, the engine had to help the car go uphill, but uh, we are almost done now. 19% battery left. It claims one kilometer left. And we have done almost 40 kilometers. Okay, but uh, from what I know, it shouldn't stop until we have around 11% left. So you're just gonna keep driving. All right, hybrid mode is on. You see over there, HEV. Fossil engine kicked in at 16% already. All right, so we drove 41 kilometers. 
Okay, we're back at the starting point. Now we will do the 120 kilometers per hour test. We have to hurry. It's, it's Friday afternoon, so there are lots of left lane huggers here. So let's do the high speed test, and then I then we summar summarize afterwards. Okay, so I see that in the hybrid mode right now, when we are just stationary, um, the car will try to charge the battery slowly. Yeah, but we don't want to charge it too much because we want to run it on depleted battery. Alright, we're on the move, high speed run. We actually have to cruise at 125 kilometers per hour. So it's somewhat inaccurate at higher speed. The consumption is 6.6, .6. it's hopefully going to stabilize. And uh, battery has now been discharged to 8%. Yeah, so it's running, doing a little bit of dance there to uh, try to optimize it for uh, efficiency. We are now at Strandlicia and we're gonna turn around here. Uh, 60, oh yeah, it's going to be 65 kilometers total. 35, uh, 32.5 over here. Yeah, it's good enough run. Okay, let's go back. We are back at the starting point and you won't believe this. The consumption was seven liters per hundred kilometer. All right, let's now, I'm gonna go to the restroom and then we do the 90 kilometers per hour test. Okay, I was hungry, so I had a little bit of food while I was parked outside here, while the car was doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, because it, it's, it doesn't pay off to plug it in, because the onboard charger in this car is so slow. 3.5 kilowatt, it's not worth it. Money-wise, time-wise, no. But the nice feature with the hybrid is that, you know the engine has been heated up? There is plenty of heat in the engine there. And uh, I was camped there for a while, at least 15 minutes, and I had a car on, but you see the engine is not running. It just uses the leftover heat to heat up the cabin. And of course it uses the hybrid battery. I'm not sure how that stuff works, but it just takes the leftover heat from the engine and heats up. And actually right before I started recording, the engine started for, uh, it ran for about 30 seconds and then it stopped again. So, uh, okay, okay, nice. But uh, now let's reset and do the 90 kilometers per hour test. Okay, we are on the move, going at 93 on the speedo. And this car has regenerative brakes. Yeah, we are capturing the potential energy when going downhill. Wait, okay, we're done, yeah, all right. So here's Mjösen today. Mjösen is very calm, almost no wind, yeah. Good stuff. Okay, let me see. I think I will still drive to Strandlichion back again. We are on the way back now, and uh, look at this consumption, man. 4.9 liters per 100 kilometer. Wow. Going at 90 kilometers per hour, yeah. Oh, man. This car has really exceeded my expectations. <laughs> Okay, we're back at the starting point and this time I plug it in because I might stay here a while and we'll see how much we get. Well, okay, so to summarize, we managed to drive 40 kilometers in the pure EV mode with a little bit of help for the engine, let's say 40 kilometers. So that's less than what I did in summer with a Kia Seed station wagon, but you know, it's colder outside and this is, uh, I think it's a slightly less efficient car. But um, also back then I also measure that um, if from 100% to about 50%, it was around seven and something kilowatt hours. So it means that seven kilowatt hours divided by 40 kilometers is 175 watt hour per kilometer. So not too efficient today, but okay, okay, at least we have that number. <coughs> and then at 90 kilometers per hour, I averaged five liters per 100 kilometers. And then at 120 kilometers per hour, it was seven liters per 100 kilometers. So it's actually a 40% increase. And then if I look at uh, my EV test, I have lots and lots of tests. The difference between uh, 90 and 120 in an EV is also usually around 40%. It depends how efficient the car is and all that. But uh, yeah, you see, it means that uh, when you're driving faster, you just have physics, you know, you have friction that uh, applies regardless of you have EV or fossil car. And uh, another thing I want to uh, calculate is that, um, okay, so, you know, one liter of gasoline, this, this is a gasoline car. One liter of gasoline contains 8.9 kilowatt hour energy. 
So the consumption numbers for the pure uh, fossil version of mode is actually 445 watt hour per kilometer at 90. And then at 120, it's 623 watt hour per kilometer. It's just insane how, how much energy it is. And um, also that means that um, based on the 175 watt hour per kilometer, if we do draw in, in pure mode, it means that this car has 39% uh, efficiency when in fossil mode. And that is actually pretty good. I think some inefficient cars, they will have as low as 30% efficiency. So 39 is good, very good. Yeah, I think actually the hybrid system helps get high efficiency because you can recapture the, the energy when you go downhill. And also when you go uphill, the electric motor helps you help the engine go uphill so i guess to to make the the engine run more uh, efficient yeah and uh, another thing i checked was that okay and you know if it's so inefficient uh, how much heat are we actually wasting because you know of the 39 percent that goes into motion about 60 percent goes into heat waste of energy almost waste of energy but you might be thinking ah, oh, but that's nice because then you get free heat in the cabin right yeah but if you do the math you get as much as 24 kilowatt of leftover heat i had to recalculate and do some ninja asian calculation but yeah it's 24 kilowatt of heat that's massive you only need about one kilowatt to heat up the cabin and then the, the remaining 23 kilowatt is just wasted it goes i guess some of it goes through the hood and then lots of it goes out the exhaust and it's just massive how much waste you have <laughs> so actually when we are driving at 90 kilometers per hour we have uh, 40 kilowatt of power draw you know in pure power and then whatever goes in waste that's another story and then in comparison if you drive it in ev mode you only need 15.8 kilowatt to keep the car in motion okay we we didn't have a heater on but if the heater was on if there was a way to put on the heater let's say 17 kilowatt then 17 kilowatt versus 40 kilowatt that's a huge difference and i think one thing i haven't talked about is that when cars are idling or when cars are stuck in stau, traffic, right, uh, congestion, fossil cars, many cars which don't have start-stop system, they have to idle the engine. And then when you idle the engine, you usually use around, I think it was 0.6 liters per hour. And that means, um, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, I think it was around there, 0.6 liters per hour. And if we do the math there, it also means that uh, idling cars are usually pulling around six to seven kilowatt. Just standing still, they are pulling six to seven kilowatt. And then, okay, in a cold place, you uh, you spend one kilowatt for the heater. Or, I mean, one kilowatt of that goes to heating at the ca cabin. But then, the remaining six kilowatt is again waste of energy. And you can just try to calculate out on the road here if thousands of cars are stuck in traffic and half of them doesn't have start stop system or half of them are not hybrids then how many kilowatt are we actually wasting <laughs> yeah i don't even want to think about how much energy we're wasting every day on fossil cars but you know i'm not bashing uh, uh, hybrid fossil i mean the hybrid in my opinion is actually a good deal it seems like the hybrid drivetrain uh, pays for itself, pays for the cost and pays for the extra weight and complexity because it seems like it makes the car, well, it makes the fossil car more efficient and more economical also if you can charge at home and all that. So maybe I should try to figure out if the hybrid is better or not. But my gut feeling says that the hybrid is actually better than pure fossil. So I might change my mind because in the in the past I've been bashing hybrid saying that it's waste, you know, it's pointless. But maybe it isn't. Okay, okay, maybe it isn't. And do you know why the hybrid it makes the fossil better? Because it has electric drivetrain. So how wait, I have an idea here. Instead of making a hybrid why don't you just make a pure electric then it would be even better right <laughs> okay anyway i think that's gonna be it for now
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.